Hey guys, what's up? By Zach Detron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next Fabulous Fails video. Haven't done one of these in a while, but I think it's good that I do it um, to give you guys some failed attacks, which you can learn from just as much, if not more, uh, than you can learn from successful attacks. So um, in this video, I'm gonna show some fails at Town Hall 9 and 10, uh, some 10v11, some 10v10, and some 9v9. A good war to choose some fails from, because this was a pretty bad war by One Hive Gen. Genesis. We are not a good midweek war clan, and War and Glory, you know, one of the top clans in uh, in the Invite League, CWO Invite. Um, so they're they're a good side for sure, but that's still not no consolation for the uh, the war we had. Um, but you know, as long as we're we're keeping it going in our CWL wars. Um, that's the important thing. So hopefully this doesn't translate into our CWL wars too much. Let's go ahead and go to our first attack here, which is going to be Black Ice attacking base number five. And um, in these videos, not picking on anyone, these are pretty much all good plans, but there's just things that in hindsight you can see a little bit better than you can when you're planning an attack on these bases. So this first one, um, is more of a general thing that you can talk about for plenty of different attacks for not just 10v11, but just in general, um, I guess 10v11 more so. But for the, for queen walks and for queen charges, you want to get have the queen get percentage and not necessarily be encountering all these defenses. The queen and the healer uh, tandem, that combination, is great because nothing dies. The it's sustainable. The the healers are on the queen. The queen is uh, taking out buildings and everything staying up. Uh, with a few rage spells to help, but in this situation the queen's not getting a whole lot of percentage uh, Sorry if you hear my dog in the background uh, <laughs> um, The queen's kind of charging. She's gonna encounter the lava hound CC the queen uh, Lots of point defense all stuff that makes it very difficult and very expensive um, I think on this attack using the queen on the other side of the base would have been better and then sending a, a king golem bowler kill squad into the area where he sent the queen charge uh, would have been uh, a, a, good, a, swi a good switch to switch the king and maybe some bowlers on the bottom and send the queen in up top because the queen is good for percentage for sniping buildings not for a ton of defenses and CC troops especially a lava hound of course not going to be a good combination queen and a lava hound um, so keep that in mind when you're when you're creating a funnel, which you almost always have to do at 10 v 11, in this case a funnel for dragons, but you have to funnel pretty much all your troops no matter what. When you're creating that funnel, you have to keep in mind what's the best uh, and most efficient way to funnel on each side. Use the queen where there's a lot of buildings. Uh, you can use healers on her to keep her up uh, for a sustained queen walk. And then use the king, the bowlers, the golem for a heavier push where there's more defenses. There's the CC troops if you know it's Lava Hound. Uh, maybe heroes they take less spells just one rage will do it so be be aware of that i think if those uh two funneling sides were switched out this attack would have had a better chance of succeeding um moving on we have uh let's see 15 versus 19 here this is a uh, nigia aka devon and he is um attacking this base here and there's one uh major change i think would have given this chance of this attack a much better chance of being successful and we'll see it as we go here but basically he's going to do the witches on one side the um by the way that giant surprise is back just to annoy everyone more um <laughs> not throwing shade at supercell but uh for clan wars these little surprises can be somewhat annoying um anyway though nagia drops down the uh queen on the other side there then up the middle comes the typical uh golem king bowlers he's doing the queen walk because there's a i think a hound cc but anyway notice his spells he has two jumps two rages and a freeze to start i think if he brought if he didn't bring the freeze and he brought a um, spacing out and a heal instead, it would have been successful. And I think he should not have dropped the second jump so early. The first jump was good. He gets the Inferno Tower right here off some bowler bounces. But right here, he shouldn't have jumped over this area because as soon as the Inferno Tower goes down, if he just heals his troops, they will swing right through this wall. Uh, the king with his ability, the bowlers under rage, and even some skeletons in there, they will get through the wall very quickly. Then he should have jumped over this back end wall instead of trying to 
freeze this inferno because on these types of attacks you have to get both infernos taken out so the queen and the witches going around the outside can clean up the rest of the base here so right here a heal for the bomb tower for the giant bombs for all the uh the wizard tower all the splash damage that the bowlers are going to encounter a heal would have kept them up much better and if he had just let them beat through the wall there, um, they would have had time to get healed back up. Then once they get in range of this next Inferno, once they're through the wall, uh, the jump would have been there. The king would have had much higher health because he would have had bowlers uh, behind him in greater numbers and would have been able to probably push in and get that next Inferno Tower taken out, which would have been the key to three-starring this base because, um, you know, it, you know, it might have been a toss-up. But the queen had a good shot with a witch next to her. And then the witches on the other side go down just because the kill squad uh, thinned out so much mainly. But I think had he let the troops beat through the wall, don't be afraid of doing that, of letting your troops swing through a wall at some point in the base. The key is you only want to do that when they're going to be out of range of the inferno. So this inferno will go down before uh, they go for the wall. And then they won't be in range of this inferno yet until they get through the wall. So if you can find a place like that where there's no inferno, tower coverage feel free to just heal them up at that area let them swing through the wall and then use your second jump later on in the base i think that would have been a good change uh, just in my opinion there let's move on um we'll go down just into the um onto the map here this is number 19 we have dow a solid hit especially i think this was a fresh attack i'm not certain but i think this might have been a fresh attack so a very good try um considering that but uh, there's also uh, for another 10v10 change that I think is uh, not j just like the last one can be done in many different circumstances here, uh, not just in this specific attack. So uh, this is a typical, you know, kill squad has both heroes in it, has the king and then some of his own bowlers goes ahead and brings a CC hog, which is, uh, you know, it's fine. Sometimes people bring the CC hog. Sometimes people bring the CC bowlers. Either way, you can do it. Um, so anyway, the troops moving in right here. A nice poison. Lava Hound's going to delay the queen, but everything goes in. Gets pretty decent value from his kill squad. Gets some core Teslas taken out. Then right here, hog's about to go in. I, um, the main change I would have made is there's a lot of base left up, you know, basically have to go all the way around to 180 to some of these defenses finishing on like the expo cannon area now not going to be any giant bombs until this inferno tower you can see no gaps right here now he's going to go ahead and heal his hogs right over this area i think if he freezes the inferno in the expo he doesn't have to heal his hogs until the inferno tower compartment where there's probably giant bombs I think a heal placed right on that wall right there to cover the inferno, then also start to cover some of these defenses would allow the second heal to cover the rest of the defenses over here, that last big group. Instead, he goes ahead and heals early, then freezes and heals again, kind of. So you can see uh, right here, you're going to go ahead and drop that freeze or that heal. I think if a freeze goes down right there on the inferno tower and on the expo, just a few point defense on the hogs isn't enough to warrant a heal. Um, if you went a little bit heavier on hogs right in this area a little bit sooner, could have easily waited longer on that heal. And the freeze probably would have stayed effective all the way until the hogs were just about on the inferno, at which case they can take it out and uh, you know get the heal benefit. It only targets five hogs at a time, so not that big of a deal. But instead, he's forced to use that second heal on the wizard towers. Um, the if he had used the first heal later, he could have basically covered um, this expo and maybe these two infer uh, these two wizard towers almost with that heal. That would allow him to heal over this air defense more. And I think, you know, might not have been the, the three star because there's still some spring traps, but would have been much closer. And um, that's one thing you guys can keep in mind. The freeze is almost a heal in itself because it's taking defenses off of the hogs. It's not just about uh, taking away the um, the Inferno Tower, which reduces the heal, it blocks the heal spell. It's also about taking defenses off your hogs and allowing them to go longer without a heal spell. Um, so just be careful for giant bombs and stuff, but that's something you can do when you have to really stretch out your spells and you're short on spells uh, for how much of the base is left up. So moving on, 36 on 40, go into here again. Um, this is Long Nikon, and let's take a look at the replay here. Let's see, this was a funneling problem. Now, when you have a kill squad that has, you know, your heroes, it has three golems, a bunch of wizards, the funnel has to just be right there, perfect, and he's not going to get it right at this uh, nine o'clock area. 
needs that gold storage to go down. I talk about boulder funneling. I have a video that's always like recommended on my uh, regular uploads. It's always the same video that's recommended. Uh, it's so crucial to get that second layer of funneling done and it just isn't done. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be that important not taking out that gold storage. But it is because it's going to draw bowlers. It's going to draw the queen. Now, it's not completely his fault. Some Tesla's popped, took out his wizards here. Um, but it's just something we have to acknowledge because it really can ruin the attack. Um, and it seems to always just come back to bite you because the queen's in the base right here. You're thinking, okay, everything went in. They're going to they're get healed back up. They're going to take that next jump spell uh, towards the X spell over here, which he's about to drop. But it always seems to come back to bite you. Right here, the queen is going to step back, and um, the bowlers are also going to regress to the Tesla. Um, just a little bit unlucky. That's a difficult Tesla to funnel. Um, I, a good adjustment would have been dropping the queen lower down, letting her take out the gold storage, letting her take out the Tesla, then walk up, letting her funnel herself in a way, because that can almost be a more effective thing to do and a safer thing to do to drop her a little bit closer to the edge here towards this abyss that is the queen going outside the base drop her a little bit closer to this area and let her funnel herself into the base there that would have been a good adjustment difficult to adjust when the teslas pop but that was something that needed to be done because the kill squad just got too weird on him and did not get deep into that expo which is where he was hoping for them to go he was investing so many spells and troop space needed to get much deeper with the kill squad and he didn't so nice try to lk um, we have one more attack to show as this one wraps up for about 90% uh, percent or so. Gets the two-star there, but that's about it. A tough war for our Town Hall 9s. You know, it's something we've struggled with, but fortunately, you know, you would notice it because we put up 85 stars last week in CWL um, against one of the top clans. It was 85-86. You guys saw the end of that war if you watched the stream. Um, it was close. So the Town Hall 9s, you know they definitely help set up a, a win, but they're not they're not going to be that deciding factor like the Town Hall 11s and the Town Hall 10s are, which we've been a little bit stronger on. So something we're still working on. Uh, you know, always trying to improve ourselves. Let's go ahead and take a look at is it on 30? Yeah, 24 on 30. This is Kyle, and let me try to remember what this one was. Oh yeah, I remember what this one was. Um, something that once again is a good lesson you can take to pretty much any attack, um, even beyond Town Hall 9 attacks, it is when you're sending in a kill squad and you don't know what the CC is, you can't rely on your queen to take out uh, the heroes, especially the enemy queen, if there's that wall in between and you're not jumping to her. Right here you have the two tile gap, but not only that, she has to also come uh, in this direction towards like these defenses. She has to come like one or two tiles that way. So she has to come diagonal to, the, to where this air sweeper is in order for the, the king to target. And because the CC is unknown and people like using Lava Hounds, they're pretty effective, I'll admit. Lava Hounds are becoming popular again at Town Hall 9 in the CC. Nothing's going to get the queen because the uh, his own queen and wizards and anything that has range basically is going to be stuck on that lava hound, whereas everything that doesn't have range, the king, I think there might have been, actually there wasn't even any bowlers or anything, um, so just the king pretty much uh, has no chance getting through that wall to the queen. As a result, she doesn't go down and that will compromise the attack. 21 hogs plus a CC plus three heals, a poison, and a loon. You know, maybe has a, a decent shot at three starring this base. Gets a small chunk of it taken out at the bottom, but gets an expo. Gets some pretty valuable things. If the queen goes down, he has a good shot, but you got to make sure um, coming at an angle where you know that your reliable troops like your king, your if you have bowlers, um, stuff that's not going to get caught up in the lava hound or the CC troops too much, know that it has a good shot at the queen because you can't you can't rely on your own queen to take out the queen in most situations, especially with a kill squad on a fresh hit where you don't know what the CC is. If that lava hound is, uh, if it comes out and it tanks your queen forever, you got to have something that's going to be in the same compartment as the enemy queen because the, if there's nothing that can reach there without a jump spell it's going to be difficult to fight through the walls and get to that queen um, so anyway uh, it kind of falls apart right there nice try to Kyle 
that'll do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this series. I've had a few people request it, so I wanted to do one uh, to let you guys see some of our, of our fails because we certainly have our fair share. Um, this one is going to be pre-recorded and uploaded. I'll be out of town uh, this weekend, so going to get it out for you guys um, sometime Friday, Saturday or something so you can watch it and hopefully have one more before I get back and record the uh, in real time videos. So that'll do it. Thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.